Hi, I'm Macy from the Charleston County Public Library, and thanks for watching this virtual program. September is Library Card Sign-Up Month, and your Charleston County Library Card is the key to a wealth of information and resources for free. Of course we have tons of books. We also have movies, telescopes, museum passes, and gaming tablets for kids. And your library card gives you access to tons of digital content, like ebooks, audiobooks, music, and magazine subscriptions. Plus access to databases for professional development, learning a new language, and genealogy research. Your library card is available for free if you live in Charleston County. Just stop by your neighborhood branch with your proof of address and your ID. For more information, visit ccpl.org. Hi, I'm Monica Walker and I'm one of the many street photographers that basically roam around the streets of um, London. Um, I'm not by any means an expert nor uh, a world-renowned photographer, but I do love street photography. And today I really wanted to share with you what street photography is. And this is for people that know absolutely nothing about street photography. This is why it's called a street photography primer. Um, this is your first step into learning about street photography, what it is, what are the best tips to get started, and just um, take it from there. So the next step is to basically um, understand what street photography is. Uh, now, if you do a quick search online, you'll find many different definitions. Um, people have different ideas in regards to what street photography is, but there is a core to every single one of them, and that basically is um, capturing life as it happens in the public space. One of the advantages of doing street photography is basically that a it's an art form. Um, you do this because you want to capture life as it happens all around you in public spaces. It's about an inquiry into the human nature uh, that surrounds us and how that basically can be captured on a two-dimensional surface via our own cameras. Um, so what does uh, it encompasses? When you're doing street photography outside, um, you're also doing street portraits. Uh, you're also capturing uh, pets. You can also capture urban landscapes. There are so many different types of things that you can focus on when you're doing street photography. Does it have to have a metropolis like this one for you to call it street photography? Answer is no. You can basically do street photography anywhere around the world. The only thing that you have to focus on is the life that is constantly happening around you and capturing those moments um, that are so incredible and interesting. Um, you're uh, an actual storyteller and those are the moments that you want to capture. Uh, and in that way, street photography requires patience, creativity. It also requires a little bit of bravery and in many cases, um, a willingness to just look and absorb and really capture all those elements of humanity. So now that we actually know what street photography is, basically capturing life as it happens in the public space, um, we're going to have to do something to get us really started. And in many cases, that pretty much is going to be leaving absolutely all of your, your gear behind, going out into your towns, your villages, your, your, your cities, doesn't matter, whatever you are, and do an exercise of actively looking, of actively observing around you. Um, this is like a really good exercise because um, when you go out into the streets and you are used to your own hometown, you're so used to it that you may have forgotten, you have, uh, may have missed a lot of the different things that make those streets, those spaces very special and I think that you need to start um, taking photos of your area uh, with fresh new eyes and the only way to do that is if you position yourself in the um, in the place of a tourist uh, go around your hometown start thinking in terms of um, this is the first time that you've seen it uh, what can you see where are people going to where are people are coming from where are the public spaces that has a lot of um, of life um, where there are lots of crossings um, I don't know maybe go um, close to a mall or shopping center you can also go to um, 
public transit places, you never know, downtown areas. There's a lot of places where people are coming to and from which are perfect to basically um, see a, the architecture of your hometown, how light falls at different times of the day, um, what could be perfect spots where you would just wait for the perfect picture when somebody comes along and you can just do a bit of juxtaposition uh, in regards to your background that you have already chosen and then you just wait for the perfect person to come along and just snap that picture. So your first uh, mission, should you wish to accept it, is basically go out into your hometowns. Look, actively look. There's a lot of people watching in both as well. It's fine. It's very scary and it's sometimes very um, intimidating to basically look at strangers. Uh, but this is the first step into street photography because if you don't know your town, you don't know what are the key areas where you can actually see things happening, then you will miss things uh, when you're ready to start snapping those photos. So go out, look, and enjoy those spaces. So the next part that we have to take into consideration after you've learned what street photography is and after you've taken the first step into going into your towns and looking around, um, actively looking for the things that you would like to capture later on, um, it's the code of conduct. Um, just remember that just because you're in an open space, um, in the public space, does not mean that you can just go around and um, taking pictures without considering some issues of privacy and some issues in regards to what is acceptable behavior and what is not. So um, just a couple of guidelines. Uh, please don't try to take any photos into private residences inside, indoors, through windows. Um, first of all, that is really immoral and quite possibly illegal. So um, do not try to, um, to take any sort of pictures when you're outside into private homes. You want to be in actual public spaces um, to take those pictures. That does not mean that places like um, bars or um, cafes, restaurants, um, <sighs> laundromats are off limits. Uh, on the contrary, they're also kind of public spaces and shooting through glass might actually give you a little bit of a, an extra kind of um, image, but just make sure that when you do that, you're doing it actually in uh, public spaces, um, indoors and outdoors. Now, um, talking about this code of conduct, remember to respect the people around you. Um, every single action that we take as street photographers has to come from a space of respect. Um, there will be people out there that may not want their pictures taken. And if you position yourself in their place um, and you think like, I, I wouldn't want anybody to take a picture of me like that, then that picture should be off limits. Um, you just have to always consider, consider that their position and your position in that. So make sure that when you go around, just respect the people around you. Also, um, if by any chance you're doing candy photography, as in just trying people not to, um, not to see you, which is part of the, um, the street photography kind of like style, um, always remember uh, to smile. Um, you can always smile. Um, acknowledge the fact that they've been in the frame and for the most part they will smile back and they, move, they will move on so there is no reason for you to to be uncomfortable or unhappy if you get caught um, if someone approaches you and asks you to delete a photo do it um, there is no photograph that is worth any sort of confrontation um, and if that is what they want you to do then you might as well just do it uh, but for the most part you'll be pretty much okay uh, in many countries, um, it is absolutely okay to take pictures in public spaces. I know this is true for the US and Canada. Just make sure that when you take pictures somewhere else, you check their um, privacy laws just in case. Now, two more issues to take into consideration. One, um, photographing children. There is a lot of things that can go wrong with that, especially if you don't have parents' permission. So from my point of view, I think that unless you actually ask permission to the children's uh, guardians, that you should not take pictures of children. And if you do, just ensure that their faces are not um, in the picture itself, um, just to avoid any sort of problems. Um, the other area that you should always consider to avoid at all costs, especially if you are new to street photography, is photographing the less fortunate. Um, if you are in that position, would you like to be photographed? 
Um, unless you're willing to spend time and maybe money or food on um, talking to them and requesting their permission to take that picture. Again, if this is the first time that you are entering into street photography, it really is, it's, it's better to just, you know, avoid taking pictures of the less fortunate for now. Um, but all in all, just always remember that when you go out into the streets, you always take pictures from a position of respect of the people around you. Um, if you get caught taking a photograph, just smile and everything will be fine. So we have already uh, seen what street photography is. We've already made the first actively looking exercise. Uh, we've already discovered what our code of conduct should always be when we go out into the streets and now we have to talk about gear because obviously in street photography we're going to need some sort of gear to go out and capture life as it happens in public spaces now um, i'm going to tell you something that every photographer needs to hear and that is the gear does not make the photographer yes it will help you into making amazing photographs in some cases very expensive gear does have some advantages shutter speed fast and all that but the truth of the matter is that if you don't know what you're looking for you don't know rules of composition you do not go outside actively looking um, it doesn't matter how expensive and how amazing your gear is it's just not going to work now for beginners, I would say that if this is the first time that you're doing street photography or any kind of photography, the best bet uh, that you're going to, um, to want to do is to grab your small smartphone devices and use this as your first step into street photography. Why? Because these guys are ever present. Everybody has a smartphone. Everybody goes around with them. They do have fairly good cameras and it's just to start like that first step, um, easing into a style that um, is a bit uh, challenging. Um, and the smartphone will actually uh, allow you to pass a notice. So you can always just go around taking those first pictures and, um, and yes, uh, just, Take it with you. Some of those phones actually um, allow you to manually control every one of the settings, um, which is actually really good, but don't make things difficult for yourself. If this is the first time that you're trying this style, just leave everything in automatic and just go around taking pictures um, of everything around you with your smartphone. So yeah, point and shoot um, camera will also work well. For the most part, they're also everywhere and people just um, consider them kind of like the hallmark of the tourist. So if you also want to, uh, to be on notice while you're taking pictures, maybe a point and shoot is going to be your best bet. And in that case, again, leave everything in automatic. This is your first time out. Um, don't try anything fancy. Your mission is to actually look, capture those photographs and, um, and just uh, use whatever means uh, you have at your disposal, be a point and shoot, be at your smartphone. Um, and of course, you can always go for something a little bit more expensive, either DSLR or a mirrorless camera. Um, and again, if you want a challenge and you already know a little bit about your gear, um, knowing your gear is the best thing that you can actually um, do. Just make sure that you understand it. Um, but a lot of street photographers usually prefer um, one particular setting which is to shoot in upper two priority um, and that is probably the best tip that I can give you if you want to jump you know directly into um, into your gear and trying to get um, your camera working um, with a setting that you know is quite common with most street photographers but um, whether you're going to be using your smartphone, whether you're going to be using a point and shoot, uh, whether you're going to be using a, mirror a mirrorless or a DSLR, it doesn't really matter. Uh, whatever you're going to use, always remember that your eyes are the ones that are capturing things. Um, this is just a tool. Uh, this is the intermediary. This is how you're going to capture it. And therefore, uh, you should always um, remember to to look to to find those those moments to find the decisive moment I'll tell you a little bit more about that later and to basically um just use whatever you have with you because that is going to be the best camera the one that you currently have so you can capture those moments that you see at the precise moment when they happened so that is my advice for you for gears whatever you have with you is the best camera that you can actually have 
So now that we have our gear and we're getting ready to go out and start um, capturing life as it happens in the public space, there are a couple of things that we have to take into consideration um, because not everybody that takes a camera and starts uh, shooting um, pictures out there um, are, might be actually doing it right. Uh, there's a lot of subpar uh, street photography because a lot of people do not take um, the rules of composition uh, kind of seriously in some cases. And I can guarantee you that if you familiarize yourself with some of these rules, um, which you can later on break because that is what we all do. Uh, but if you actually familiarize yourself first with the rules of composition, it will definitely improve tremendously um, your street photography. Now, these rules of composition, uh, the moment that you make a search of mine, you can find all of them. Um, art history books, photography books, you're gonna find them everywhere. I'm just gonna give you a couple of examples that will help you kind of like start uh, taking those, um, those, those composition rules into consideration when you're looking around with your camera trying to take the perfect photograph. Um, probably one of the rules of composition that is the most important in a way, um, it's basically the rule of thirds. Um, every camera, including your phone, um, is going to have a grid um, that is going to be made up uh, of nine parts, equal parts. Now, technically, if you place your subjects or the points of interest in the intersections of any of these um, of these grids, what's going to happen is that it's going to um, allow you to um, create uh, lines of interest. Um, it's going to create a type of dynamic feel to your photograph that um, is going to make it quite pleasing to the eye. It's going to make it very interesting. Don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong in actually centering your subject if that is exactly what your subject needs. Um, but that is one of the things that you have to judge for yourself once you're taking all of these different photographs. Um, another good compositional tip is going to be, for example, symmetry. Uh, we as human beings absolutely love symmetry. And if you can actually find um, subjects that can have that beautiful symmetry, I am particularly fond of reflections um, that actually create that kind of uh, symmetry with the spaces around you and that is really interesting again it just gives your 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 photograph um, different points of interesting and additional layers of storytelling which is actually quite great so another composition tip that might bring your photographs um, into to life um, in a fantastic way um, can actually be uh, leading lines um, we are all familiar with the um, the way that uh, train tracks actually seem to lead your eyes into that point in infinity, right? So basically our eyes um, are, are attracted to those lines that are telling us, okay, go into this distance. Uh, you can find leading lines in so many different places around you, um, including shadows. Imagine a shadow that falls over someone's head as they pass around an area. And of course that line will just make our eyes follow it to whatever the subject um, that you want to be able to, um, to emphasize is. So leading lines can actually be straight. They can also be like curvy. Um, there's many different ways in, in which you can actually use leading lines to basically allow for the viewer, once you have taken the photograph, um, to lead them to the point where you want to, um, to the, the point of the photograph that you actually want to emphasize. So in that way, uh, leading lines will actually be quite a very good um, compositional tip as well and something to look out for. Um, that also works with juxtaposition. Find subjects that um, and things that may be interesting when opposed to something else. Uh, make use of uh, negative space uh, as well. It's not just the things that are there, but also the things that are not there. The space between other spaces. Um, all of these might actually give your, your photographs a, a different kind of like feel. Um, and I think that the last compositional tip that I would like to share with you is, of course, the ideas of frames. Um, there are different ways in which you can frame a photograph. It's not just your camera that's going to help you frame. It's not using the rule of thirds or all of the other different things. But even around us, there are really interesting spaces um, that I can uh, allow us to kind of like look through them um, and create a frame around it just to create more interest into your photograph. So you have all of these different elements that you can use in your compositions just to make them more interesting, more artsy looking, um, and of course, um, just give them a little bit more life um, as, a, as a true photograph. So 
All of those are the compositional tips that I have for you. There are many, many more. But the truth of the matter is that the more familiar that you are with these compositional tips, the easier that is going to be for you to capture them and see them um, every time that you go out with your camera. So familiarize yourself with them um, and I can guarantee you that your photography will go maybe from here to here in very few, <laughs> in a very, very short time um, if you are familiar with these rules of composition. Again, they're there and they're also there to be broken um, if the subject matter requires it, but it's good to actually know them um, and be guided by something, some rules when you're starting in street photography. Now that we're coming to the end of this video tutorial, I think that the last uh, point of interest that uh, is worth mentioning is that once you take your photograph, it doesn't mean that the photograph is over. I mean, definitely, if that is how you want to, um, to create it and you don't want to do anything else with it, then that's it. You've managed to make your own um, little artwork uh, <laughs> with your camera and your good eyes um, and you have captured life as it happens. In some cases, because everything is so chaotic out here in the um, in the streets um, there it, it will not go amiss to actually use some post processing that just means that um, you can use certain programs that are available for your either your smartphone you can also have programs uh, for post processing uh, on your um, computers some of the most famous ones um, that people use around Snapseed for um, smartphones uh, Lightroom for computers um, but the idea basically is that you'll take that and you'll be able to just um, manipulate certain aspects. You can work a little bit on that rule of thirds. You can um, manage to do so many different things with it. Um, so, so yeah, you always have the option of uh, manipulating your photograph in post process um, and that's it. You are done. So take your cameras, go out into the world and start capturing life as it happens. Thank you very much for your attention and enjoy your journey.